Time and again, I have seen, heard, and witnessed narcissists using dark forces against their victims to cause them pain and suffering. In fact, I have experienced this myself, which is why I believe there are unseen forces and energies out there that can be used to cause harm. In we are going to talk about why narcissists are drawn to black magic, the occult, and the dark arts. Narcissists do, in fact, operate in the dark realm, the demonic realm, satanic realm, witches and warlock realm, and all of the demonized spiritual forces that you can think of. Black magic, blue magic, red magic, you magic. They operate in it. I know this from first-hand experiences. So here's just one. That was recently. When I say recently, um, back in 2019. Or was it 20? Yeah, it was 2019. And I absolutely fine you guys watch me i try to eat the right things don't always eat the right things but i'm living my best life to the best of my ability with the lord has put in me and every day i'm learning more and more how to treat my life myself better food intake included mental health included hence one reason why i got away from the narc but on to the story. I'll make it short. I am at work. I'm fine at home. I get to work. And I'm working on the phone with doctors. And it, giving them information about the insurance policy that they have as doctors. And I'm a wealth full of information they call myself and other co-workers to get information of what they don't understand about their insurance and how it works and how much it will cover them etc so that takes a lot of me pulling from my brain power a lot of me using my books which is my full resource if i don't have the answer it takes me getting up walking to the medical library which is just a little ways from my desk. And it takes me holding a sometimes lengthy conversation to fully explain in detail. So that's a lot of energy. So I'm at the desk and my phone rings. My day is beginning at 8.30 in the morning. And I'm fully geared, all prayed up. You know, I go to the bathroom and pray. I'm at my desk. The phone rings. I take my first call. Suddenly, my head feels like somebody is setting a brick house on it. So I play it off and I continue to give my full enthusiastic mannerism and hospitable char characteristics to each caller. And then I feel from my head down to my chest, feeling heavy, like I'm almost choking, but like someone is squeezing my heart and making it fight to pa-pump, pa-pump, pa-pump. And then it moves down to my stomach. Now I have to go to the bathroom instantly out of nowhere. I have what they call, the kids call a bubble guts, diarrhea. And I'm back and forth to the bathroom. And now it's lunchtime. It's about 1140. I clock off to go to lunch. And I can't stand up. Not because I feel like my legs is going to give out. Well, that too. But I could not stand up. I could not hold my head up. I couldn't open my eyes. And, and I'm feeling the results of when you have diarrhea is followed by uh, upset stomach which is the worst type of one of the worst upset stomach 
And now I'm almost in the froze position like the actor that's in the Get Out movie. Eyes is pouring with tears. I can't move. I'm in pain and I'm stuck. Now I'm limped over my office desk and there's a young lady that's new that I was training. And so she came over to my desk to see if I can show her where the lunchroom is. Because when you're training, the person that you're training goes to lunch with their trainee the same time, comes back, you know, things of that nature. And she kept nudging my shoulder. I could not move. And she looked and seen tears just falling from my eyes. And I mustered out the words, help me get to the ladies' room. I don't want to make a scene, so I'm going to keep my head down. And I want you to go the back side of the way, where there's no not many workers there, no, no desks, and it's a big wall where you can't be seen. So she helps me get to the bathroom and I drink water. I, um, you know, get some warm tea. I'm trying everything to nurse myself and I can't figure out what just happened. Now my legs are buckling. I cannot walk. <clears throat> I have her go get my manager because I was one of the supervisors. And I have my manager, you know, let the floor know that I was leaving while well, main boss that I was leaving that she could see I was no good to work so I go immediately I do a call where you do a walk-in I immediately do a walk-in at my doctor's office I'm there all day they run tests they can't find anything my vital signs um, you know, the only thing that they told me was that my heart was beating a little irregular, but other than that, they can't find anything, you know, they took some blood specimens from me and told me that they would get back to me within 24 hours. I forced myself the next day to go to work, sit down at my desk, feeling a tiny bit okay where I can push through. And then it happens all over again. I'm slumped over. And now I'm calling my sister. I am crying. I go back to the hospital. Actually, I go to the emergency room. And they can't find anything. They're saying, you know, I'm fine. Just go shake it off with some liquids and some soups. It's probably just a little bug. And I'm saying, this is not a bug. I'm slumped over here. I can't lift my eyes open. I can't hold my head up. I'm, I'm literally slumped over like that's the way I was born. And so days go by. Weeks go by. I'm in my third week. And of course I'm home. And I am no good. I, my whole body just feel worse. And it felt like I'm just going down a slippery slope of death. I literally felt that I'm I'm going to die any day now. That everything is just falling apart inside of my organs are just failing. Not failing where not working, but nothing. My body was my 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 muscles were so sore to the point where I could lift my arm up and it would literally fall back down. I could not walk. I have to roll out the bed, and if you see my bed, it's very tall, <clears throat> and fall down to the floor. My sons had to literally, and I don't want to be too graphic, but wash me up and help me use the little girl's room. Like, literally, all while my head was slumped over, I couldn't lift it up. The light, nothing. I, I literally was dying. I felt like. So then I talked to a family member, which I had just recently got introduced to, maybe 
two months prior. And she says, can you, I told her how I'm feeling. She says, can you drive? And I'm like, not really. And I could barely talk. I was talking like, uh, really. I could barely open my mouth. Not really. She said, if you can drive, I need you to come to my house right now. And that was in another state. <clears throat> that was in another state. Almost two hours away. Another state. Right? So I drive. I get dressed. Dress nice. Took me forever to get dressed. I get dressed. I get to her house. It's a family member. A long lost family member that I just met. And she calls her mother. And her mother comes rushing over. Because she tells her mother the symptoms. My symptoms. Her mother comes rushing over and she says, oh, baby, somebody put a root on you. And I said, a root? She said, yes, you need a bath. I'm doing a long story short. She says, you need a bath. So I'm not thinking anything. And remember, I'm a child of God. I know better, but I'm desperate. And that's no excuse. You're still supposed to trust God. But I'm trusting these new family members. And so she says, you need a bath. And she says, Go home and come back over my house tomorrow at 6 a.m. Be here no later than 7 o'clock, but I wish you can get here at 6. I do just that because I'm 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 dying to me. I'm dying. And I'm thinking I'm going to get a bath. I think she's going to wash me in like they did back in the day. I don't even know if this is good. But they used to wash people in turpentine and that will wash off the spirits. Although I didn't know there were spirits on me. I'm just thinking, okay, these people have my my interest at best, and, you know, she's going to give me a bath. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe in some Epsom salt. So I go home. I come back over. I get there a little after 6 a.m., and um, my family member and her mother, they're ready. And we're, as soon as I get there, they're ready. They grab their par they purses, and we walk out the door. We drive and drive and drive and drive and drive. Then we go to this. We end up to the destination where it's this lady in the window and she's just looking out the window and she was of a different nationality and could not speak English, but she had a translator, which was her daughter. Long story short, we try to walk up the steps. It was an apartment building and she was at the top and the, the steps looked like they was like 940,000 steps. That's how many. I could not even lift my leg up to lift up the bottom step, which is on the floor. And the lady came to the top of the steps, non speaking English. And she had a translator with her. And she, the, 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 I believe it was her daughter, she began to translate. The lady was fussing, saying, Somebody put bad root on you. They want you dead. She kept shouting. Well, the daughter was shouting and relaying the message and she said i know what's wrong with you and i'm at the bottom of the steps can't walk up the steps and she began to tell me all of the things that i just shared with you and more that was wrong with me all of the symptoms and everything that i was experiencing and she and her daughter along with my family member and her mother they helped me walk up them long flight of steps them steps, they were apartment steps, so they it might have been a good 30 steps, like at least 20. And when I got to the top, she was still, the the the, lady, the non-speaking lady was, the non-English speaking lady was still fussing, saying, and her daughter was repeating it, and she was saying, my mother said, this is the worst of the worst that anybody, they want you dead, and honey, I was shaking, and um, she was saying, come out. She was saying, my mother said, come, come, just come up there. So I'm passing by all the trinkets that, you know, these people use. They're all on the floor, fruit and all of this stuff. And now I'm scared. And my will to leave is saying, get out of here, leave right now. And I tell my family member's mother, I say, uh, you know, I don't want to do this. I thought you was just going to give me a bath. I don't, you know, I believe in the Lord. I, I want to go. And she said, just let me talk. 
He said, just let me talk. You say nothing. And so I'm just so weak and, you know, baffled and might as well say dumbfounded too. So we get to the topic stuff. We go in this little tiny room, which is the kitchen. And she's telling me that the, it's an older woman that put this on me. She described the older woman, which happened to be a family member. And she says, and then she says, it is the narcissist. But she called him the husband. And she says, and another lady, and they put this on you. They want your house. And I'll tell y'all a, a story about that later. They want your house. They want you out of here. And long story short, the lady said she going to give me a bath. I never seen no water, okay? I never, your girl never seen water. So that's the only bath I know. Then she told me to go across the street, which was another place like hers, but there was a store that sold candles and this and that, blah, blah, all this mess. And so my family member's mother is buying what she told them to get, told us to get, which was candles and uh, some oil, holy oil and all this. She bought all that stuff. And gave it to me, and I threw it in the trash on my way ride home, and ran home and got my holy oil. But long story short, they, the narcissist, practicing and operating a demonic realm of forces. They do seances. They do anything that has to do with the darkness and black magic, cult, rituals, seance, uh, 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 witch, and, and all of that stuff, and warlocks. I came home, and I, the Lord, I was praying, and I was crawling up the steps, and I was saying, Lord, help me, please, God. I was even seeing shadows like they was following me in every part of my house. I would be in my living room and see a face popping out from my kitchen. And this just kept happening, kept happening, kept happening. And that's how you know they went to the graveyard. She said they went to the graveyard and, and, and I think she said they dug up or put down something that belonged to me. Which, by the way, I did a story. The something that I believe that belonged to me was I had scored two pair out of a store, um, out of a, a department store, two pairs of, well, I bought two pairs because I was just so hyped, Kooji underwear. And I bought two pair. I was like, oh, wow, this is a steal. I think I got them for like $12.99 a piece. And one of them was missing. One still had the tag on that I never, ever, ever wore. But I kept wearing them coochie. I wash them and then wear them two weeks later. Then wear them again a month later. But one of them was missing. And I didn't think nothing of it. I just was like, oh, well, maybe they're in the bottom of my drawer. They were missing for months and months and months. Come to find out, I believe that they took either my hair or something of mine. And, you know, the lady said they went to the graveyard, how they dug up them bodies, honey. And yes, this is all scary, and it was scary for me at the time, but I trust in the Lord, and even talking about it, I get a little chill, but I shake that right on off because God, the almighty creator of this land, of my life, of my breathing, my health, my healing, my life, my children, and everything about me is orchestrated and approved by Abba. Father up in heaven, hallelujah. Just be aware that this is what they do to take out you. And they will get the other demonic, narcissistic beings, family, friends, exes, and all of them, and gather them all in, honey, and they will all do the whatever they doing rituals or whatever over you 
That's why I say stop doing that. When she follow me, when she get on the knee, when she get on the knee, when she get on the knee. Stop doing those ritual dance. Why do you think they just keep coming out with that stuff? Those are rituals. Now they're targeting the little babies, the little kids. They got the little kids doing it and shaking their behind off the water, dancing all, all that is rituals with the water. I said I was going to do a video on what water is representing. But anyway, they operate in a demonic realm for to control you and your life, to destroy you and your life, to dead you and your life. True facts, facts, facts. Long story short, I got to praying, calling on the Lord, Lord, help me, Jesus. And then God just every day gave me strength. Every day gave me, oh my God, y'all. I went down to 70, I was sticks and bones. And shout out to my sister. I stayed with her. I went over there and stayed with her. You know, you got to get yourself around a spiritual person when you're going through anything, divorce, anything, right? And every morning I would get dressed. The only thing I could put on was tights. And they would be falling down like wrinkled elephant legs off of my legs. And every morning, shout out to my sister, I'd be like, sis, how bad does this look? She said, sis, you are flawless. Girl, you look, she would just pump me up. So I can get out the door and go to work. Oh, it looked like I was on drugs. It looked like I was on crack. The only thing that didn't do strangely was my face. It slendered up, but it was still flawless like I am. Hallelujah. But listen to me. Shout out to Danish Bashir. I want you to listen to this video to further conceal and confirm what I'm saying to you to be true. It's a true factor. And I'm sure if you have been ensnared by a narcissist or family member and something just wasn't right with your body, your skin start pillar. I got another story about that too. But, um, you know, you just suddenly felt sick. Your children felt sick. Yes, they putting something in your food. Do not eat their food. I haven't ate one family member's food. And this is one of the overseers of our family. I haven't ate their food. And matter of fact, it'll be 31 years in February. But anyway, shout out to uh, Danish Barshir. Amazing. He inspired this video. And he just doesn't just give you information about the narcissist and the manners of a narcissist. He give you rhyme and reason, baby. He give you the rhyme of what they doing and why. Oh, because you, you want to know why. But I kept praying, and the Lord delivered me out of the hands of the wicked demonicness of this person, cult, demon, narcissist, narcissist. Um, I began to heal each day, and it just went away like nothing ever happened. The Lord said, go around your house and anoint And I said, but Lord, I did that. Uh, years ago when I first moved here, you could still see the crosses from the oil seeping through the wood on my doors. And I'll show y'all a picture of that one day. And the Lord said, do it again. So I went and blessed every door in my house, window to window, wall to wall, ceiling to floor, literally. And then the Lord said, I want you to clean out your cabinets in the kitchen. I asked no questions. I said, okay, I'm going to clean out the closet. Maybe some stuff in there I need to throw away. And I just start cleaning. I start washing my glasses because, you know, they sit in the on use. I start washing glasses because they collect dust and everything. And then I said, I'm going to get to this drawer, this cabinet on the end by the patio door. I just throw everything in there. Keys, um, miscellaneous socks, waiting for the other sock to turn up. And child i went to the top of the cabinet where i can't even reach i would need a stool to get up there i put nothing up in the top shelf well i was cleaning that thing out i got up on my little chair what did i pull out a brown paper bag ball folded up it was a nice size brown paper bag 
folded, you know, rolled up. I opened, I'm like, what is this? I don't, I'm never putting nothing on this shelf. Honey, it was white candles in there. When I opened the bag, a smell, a scent, bust me in the nose, hit me in the head, and bust me in the chin. Just tore my nostrils up strong. So I dropped it and went and got some gloves. And I'm like, what the heck is this smell? I've never smelled this weird smell before. I began to dig that. I held it over the trash, my trash can. And I began to dig the stuff out. Y'all, my gooch, my coochie under, coochie underwear was in there. Some, another pair of my underwear, a uh, hair, back, back then I used to wear clips on my hair. You know, the big, it was Louis Vuitton clip on my hair, the ponytail. That was in there, um... Some candles, some or some some type of oil or something that which had leaked out the bag, and some other stuff that belonged to me in the bag. Child, I took that whole trash can, tied that bag up, and walked outside to a nearby outside trash can, got that thing out of there, and sprayed that cabinet down, washed everything, and. That evening, like like an hour, not even an hour later, the complete sickness. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. God, I thank you this very moment. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me and healing me. God, you are a winner. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Y'all, I went through something. I just got to give God the glory. Every time I think about his goodness, my soul shouts out, hallelujah, which is the highest. Hey, thank you. Lord, I thank you for healing me. Hey, I, hallelujah. I glorify you, Jesus. Y'all, I just had to give God the praise. He lifted that thing off moments after I got that stuff out my house. You need to be inspired by Jesus to go to him. And if this shall ever happen to me again, which I got Lord on my side, I will not go to a family member and, and, and allow them to encourage me to go see these people. But I do thank God because out of the wickedness of any wickedness, God is in there somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. God is in there somewhere. And he was in there because he just had a message for me, a purpose to show me what they was doing to me. Hallelujah. And he said, I'll carry you the rest of the way. Hallelujah. Y'all, I'm excited. Because God covers me and keeps me. Hallelujah. He keeps on doing great things for me. Oh, yes, he does. God keeps on Alpha doing great things for me. Yes, he does. Be encouraged. Go to the Father. He'll show you every time. Hallelujah. Y'all got myself all excited. Let me let you listen to Bashir. Danish Bashir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As he further lets you understand what the narcissist and his little criminal flying monkeys and the rest of his agent, agents have done against you using the demonic realm to harm and control you and sometimes in your life. But if you got the Savior, the master of all master plans, he'll keep you, hallelujah, even when you don't want to be kept, he'll keep you. Yes, he will. 
Shout out again to Danish Bashir. This man is very much needed. Y'all be encouraged and go to the Father. He is your keeper. He's El Shaddai, your provider. Whatever you need, God's got it.